Hello, and welcome to Talking Tutorials. Oh, shit. So this video is going to be a little bit different. Today, I want to talk to you about an important concept that I've spoken to with many trickers about, and every time it really helps their tricking progression, and that is how good do you want to get at tricking? Like, tricking is going to be very hard on your body, it's going to be very hard on your mind, and it's going to take a huge amount of commitment, and I just want everybody in this community to honestly ask themselves how good do you want to get? Please leave me a comment down below. I'm going to talk on this a little bit. It's rainy. I may have to move uh, locations, but this is a really important thing. So if you want to be a tricker who can do like backflips, B-twists, corks, you're probably going to want to hit a tricking session at least twice a week, maybe once a week and train really, really hard. And you're going to want to go to the gym and do some sort of like cardio and lifting maybe once a week, maybe twice a week, depending on your schedule and your lifestyle, as well as incorporating a little bit of basic movement like stretching and cardio. And if you want to get really, really good at tricking, it's probably going to take a lot on your body and a lot on everything. Like for example, every morning I try to sit and meditate in the cold or whatever weather we have and think about my tricking progression. I apologize, there's a giant truck rolling by. It's very loud. Get out of here, dog. And I try and hit the gym like for three or four hours, at least three or four times a week. Like I'm really trying to get really, really good but I don't expect that of everybody within this community. You don't have to be a super, super good tricker to enjoy tricking. And if you want to do like the basics, do some movement and just focus on like tornado kicks, hook kicks, pop 180s and like basic rolls, flowy tricks like butterfly kicks, you're not going to have to do a crazy amount with your body. But if you want to do double corks, if you want to do triple corks, you're going to need to be very, very strong. I do not know a single triple corker or not even someone who can cork who isn't relatively athletically fit to a large degree. Now, this doesn't go with just physical training. This goes with mental training. How much are you investing outside the gym before you go inside the gym to have a good gym session? Are you studying the tricks you want to learn? Can you visualize the tricks you want to learn? Now, I know a lot of this seems like a lot to do, but don't feel like you need to do it all at once. Every time I'm in the shower, I try and train my calves, do some calf raises, do a few basic stretches. Every time I'm like meditating in the morning, I'm trying to think about tricking. I'm trying to think about how my body's gonna move, how am I feeling, how are my joints doing? Not only that, when I'm in the sauna, I'm trying to hyperhydrate and then flush out all the toxins within my body because I think that is a very important thing to do physically, just for yourself. Like, I don't expect this of everybody, <clears throat> excuse me, and I think everybody has to do what feels right for them in their lifestyle. For example, I really worry about my financial future with mastering tricking. That said, I know that if I continue to invest my time in this community while also balancing the rest of my life, you know, I got a real job too now. Like these things need to progress in a way that is sustainable for you. If you have a super desky job, try and get some movement in, try and stand up, try and squat, try and jump, try and do little things like that. If you are like me at one point where you're delivering food, try and balance the weight on your body. I used to have, so fun fact, I used to deliver sandwiches for Potbelly. I used to carry around like 80 pounds on one side of my body, hauling it through farmer carry style through the entire College Park campus. It was really bad for my body, but it did get me strong. It just didn't get me strong in a balanced physical way. Not only do you need to be investing time to just getting stronger at its core, but it's also balancing your body and developing flexibility, mobility, and overall health within all your joints so that way they can move properly. I know it's a lot, this is a long rant, but 
if you do these things, it will make your tricking progression so much better. And I've talked to many athletes about these things. And every time everybody has a different amount, they're able to invest financially into their progression. Gym sessions are not free. Gyms are not free. These things do cost money and different people can invest different amounts into their progression. If you get injured in tricking, one of the reasons I train so carefully is that will cost a lot of money. That will take you out of your career. That will take you out of your life for a little bit. And that's really hard. So please genuinely ask yourself before you trick, when you're sitting down, when you got some spare time, you can journal on this if you want, because I've journaled on it in the past. How good do you want to get? And what are the things in your life that you can do to get better at that thing? And this doesn't have to be just with tricking. If you want to become a better video editor, work on that. Grind on that. Watch some YouTube tutorials on that. There's a mastering tricking for pretty much anything you want to learn on YouTube these days. It's crazy and it's really cool. Like I really like woodworking. There's so many woodworking YouTubers out there who are just throwing knowledge at you. And after they throw that knowledge at you, it's up to you to actualize it. Same with everything I do with mastering tricking. I can give you the thoughts, give you the knowledge, give you the information, but it's up to you to then use that knowledge to progress at tricking at whatever rate you want. I love tricking and I love training and I have super ADHD and I have a lot in my life that just kind of fits in place to let me be mastering tricking and do these things. I don't expect that from everybody. If you want to be a recreational tricker, you should be a recreational tricker. There's nothing wrong with that. But understand that tricking carries a risk. And the stronger you are, the more flexible you are. Actually, no. The stronger you feel and the more flexible you feel within your body, the easier tricking will be. I really do think it's about feeling good, having overall health and progressing in a way that is sustainable long term. Now, this is the first time I've done this, this like talking tutorial, and I'd love to do more of these in the future. Please do me a favor. Leave me a comment down below. Not only how good do you want to get a tricking? What do you think of this video format? Like the video if you like it. And of course, subscribe because I love tricking and I love spreading the passion of tricking to different people in this community. So please become a part of the tricking nation and get as good as you want. But it is good to ask yourself, how good do I want to get? All right, that's all I got. I'm going to ride this thing. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Yo, I talk too much. Oh. My body hurts too. I went to the gym for a while yesterday, but it all feels good. All right, thank you guys.